normal at the back. It's quite clear that the recommendation. This is the guy that we spoke on the phone the other day. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to introduce myself. You didn't tell me you were from normal, though. Uh, I have a variety of causes that I yes, support, yes. but um, it's quite clear that the recommendations of the Law Commission that you don't support are the ones surrounding cannabis. But it's obvious that the status quo with the laws on cannabis mm. aren't achieving the intended result. So why would we keep it? And similarly, with synthetic cannabinoids, you're taking a similar hardline prohibitionist approach. But your own expert advisory committee on drugs classifies them as low risk of mm. harm. Um, so what do you say to them? Are you going to fire them? Uh, no, I'm not going to fire them. Uh, and I gave you the answer to these questions last well, Friday. you didn't really talk about why prohibition, I mean, prohibition doesn't work. Why are well, we keeping Well, that was the debate we had, and for what was supposed to be a short interview, from my count, went for about 35 minutes. I'm not really going to repeat all of that now. You uh, can do a commercial for your station. I'm sure you've got the tape there if you want to play it. OK, we've got some questions at the front, too, from Ashley. Um, yeah, just following on from the drugs issue, someone on Twitter um, asked whether, by banning chronic, um, chronic products, don't you think that it makes alternatives being brought into the market more dangerous? No, I don't. And in fact, the evidence to date wouldn't support that contention. Uh, what, we've, what we did in that step was to do what actually is happening in a number of other countries around the world now. We just did it a little bit more quickly and with a little bit more sophistication than some of them, frankly. Um, and the fact that subsequently, uh, last week, I um, added another three substances to the, to the list um, demonstrates our intent and we'll continue to do that until until we have in place next year a regime that says before any products of this type come onto the market, the suppliers have to prove their safety. Um, that's why, why there'll be a new Misuse of Drugs Act next year, because this, this legislation has a very limited lifespan, and we will shift the onus of proof in a new Misuse of Drugs Act next year, which will then become the regulatory regime for the future. OK, next question. Have you got... Um, well, this is a whole different topic, but someone on Twitter also asked whether um, how you think the government has reacted to the Rena oil spill. Well, I good, good question. Yeah, yeah look, I'm, I've just done a TV interview on that, actually. I think politicians uh, should stop grandstanding over the Rena. I think it's a very serious issue, one we have not faced the complexity or the potential tragedy of previously. I think in the wash-up afterwards, if I can use that phrase, there will need to be questions about the timeliness of the response. But at the moment, my view is... We have a number of salvage experts and dispersal experts getting on site to do the job. We should let them do it as quickly as possible. But aren't, aren't politicians rightly just asking what a lot of people are probably thinking? I don't thinking? think standing on a beach trying to take a, have a photograph of yourself slopping oil into a sack because there's an election campaign okay. on is actually doing that. But, but I do think politicians should be held accountable mm -hmm. for... Not so much the fact that some crazed captain put a ship on a reef mm. in the middle of the night, but yeah. for the consequences of that action. Yeah. I do think there are issues around the timeliness of the response. I think they do need to be uh, questioned and examined, not in a, in a witch hunt yeah. way necessarily, but to make sure we've got the best response for future situations sure. of this type. But I don't think at the moment having a whole lot of pol politicians yeah. running around Tauranga uh, pontificating with statements is at okay. all helpful to you, the process. You might process. be quite right about the green standing and pontification, but... Well, it wasn't just but, the Greens I was talking about. Yeah, but... Was, uh, <laughs> did you say but, Greens or grandstanding? No, grandstanding. Oh, I oh <laughs> sorry, I thought you said the Greens. No, 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 you might, you might be right about yeah, yeah. them all grandstanding. Yeah. I see um, even, even Honey's up there today. Yeah, yeah, I mean. but, but isn't it... I'm just interested in your analysis. Uh, could it be a game-changer for the selection? Don't you think it could end up having quite an impact on uh, how people vote? I, I'm not sure that it will, because I think that at the end of the day, um, this was an issue that was completely unforeseen, you know, a shipwreck of this magnitude. Um, the question will be what the response is about, how yeah. adequate that is, and whether, um, whether there is, if you like, an ongoing tragedy. Now, we yeah, can't tell that yet. Right. I don't think it's likely to be a political game changer. It will cause I mean, some people to, to reconsider, but I don't think it's the, the sort of the, the game changer. But that of course, you know, the example in the seeking. US, of course, was Katrina and yeah. what that did to Bush. Yeah. Um, I mean, that well, that was on a far grander scale, of, of course, course, than this. Of course. Um, but I, I do take your point. I mean, we're lucky in one sense that this was a container vessel. Mm. Had it been an oil tanker on its way to, to or from Marsden Point, mm. we would have a far more serious situation on our hands right now. OK. So you can promise you're not going to head up to Tauranga? I'm not intending to. I, um, I look... I, up the no, I'm not. The I'm, going to, I'm going to leave that to the experts. But I do think once this situation has been uh, addressed, I'm not going to say resolved, addressed, then questions about the adequacy of the response, mm. I think questions about the uh, capacity that we have to deal with these situations in terms of 
the equipment yeah. um, do need to be asked, and yeah. I think they need to be tested pretty thoroughly. Okay. Now, I realise you're not a one-man band. You're, you're often accused yes. of being yes. this. United Future is yeah. a, a, a proper party. It's a one MP party, party yes. One MP party, yeah. but you go across yeah. the nation. Yeah. Mm. And, of course, you know, we're you know, having this meeting today in Dunedin North, mm. so I thought it might be appropriate that you introduce your, um, your local new candidate. I, I um, certainly will. Pete um, George is our candidate for Dunedin so North. So come up, why don't you come up here, there's a seat, seat up here. Um, He's going to come and sit at my right hand. <laughs> OK. So, uh, so, I mean, yeah, welcome, uh, Pete. Can you tell us how you got into this, uh, this, uh, this party? What, you know, what's your politics? What's your background? My background, I've been interested in politics for quite a while, but uh, on the, very much on the periphery. Um, yep. I got more involved after the last election when I saw Labour had deservedly lost. They'd done their dash, needed to rebuild, and I thought, it's a good chance to get into politics uh, in some way. Um, so I started to get involved in political blogs in yep. particular. I uh, got very active on political blogs and had a lot of debates and conversations. Yes. And as a result of that, there was, and as, as a result of conversations with people out and about, uh, it was apparent that a lot of people were uh, dissatisfied with quite a bit of politics. They yep. wanted, one thing they really asked for was, uh, some more ordinary people in politics, right. um, rather than for all professional politicians. I've got to be careful because uh, obviously Peter's a, a, a long-standing professional, professional politician, and you need that. You need okay. that experience, but you also need. Which, so this is why you said because you set up a political party at some stage. I, I floated some ideas earlier this year, and I, there was a result of uh, discussions on Kiwi Blog. Yeah. Everyone said someone should do something. We should have something different. So I said, OK, the only way of testing that out is to try something different and see what happens. So what was it, your New Zealand? You uh, your, your NZ, yes. Your NZ, you yep. set up a website, and the yep. idea, what, what was the idea behind it? The idea was just to float the idea to see what interest there was uh, in uh, approaching politics differently. Okay. Um, not changing everything, but putting a different perspective into okay. politics. So I'm sensing it didn't really work out. Uh, it did actually work out very well because what happened from that is I published, publicised it online uh, mm. and it was noticed. Uh, yeah. I got quite a bit of feedback from it. Uh, quite a few people just quietly said, good to see you actually trying to do something rather than just yeah. sitting on the, in, in the and background. And you right? do do a lot of stuff online. I see you I do a lot of stuff the, online, the Twitter yeah. sphere, blogosphere, everywhere. And you yeah. have a lot of really quite engaging and intelligent sort of commentary. Not always something I agree with, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always think you're... So w w why do you spend so much time you know, interacting online? Uh, because I'm interested in... Uh, interested in getting more involved in, in politics, but yeah. also more interested, uh, interested in trying to establish a better liaison between uh, people uh, out in the electorates and with <laughs> politics. And online is one excellent way of doing it. It's got mm. some disadvantages through lack of personal contact. Mm. Um, I met Anthony Robbins from The Standard downstairs today for the first time, and it is only a, num a small number of bloggers that I've actually uh, <laughs> met in real life, but um, it's an excellent way of uh, communicating between people and politicians, and that was demonstrated really well recently with the video surveillance bill, yeah. where there was a lot of interaction, uh, like um, uh, lawyers giving advice online, yeah. interacting with politicians, I, I and that was an excellent mm. example of a better connection between people and politicians. What, what about you, Peter? You, you don't, you're not such a sort of online pioneer, are you? What, what, oh, do you I, spend much time online? Yes, I do, actually. Okay. Um, it's a technology I'm getting to grips with. I, yeah. I spend quite a bit of time on Twitter. Okay, yep. Yeah. And um, Facebook. I retweeted yeah. one of your tweets today. Did you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so there you are. Yeah. But, but I think this is a... I mean, this is a, a. You talk about game changers before. Yeah. I think the whole sort of social media revolution is a game changer for politics in New Zealand and worldwide. I mean, you've got much more instant capacity to communicate. When I began in politics, the principal way of communicating with people was the big evening public meeting yeah. that you hope to get in the paper the following morning. Yeah. Now, Doesn't happen. Now, election campaigns are all about what goes on at this time of the day yeah. to get the evening news at night. But the social media brings a whole new dimension. You, you can go right underground. You don't have yeah. to worry about TV1 or TV3. You can just communicate your so message directly. So from a politician's point of view, it's a pretty positive uh, new innovation. It is, and I think um, I, I, I follow with interest what a lot of politicians do, and some of the stuff they do I'm surprised at. I mean, uh, 
Tell me. Uh, what? Well, this sounds interesting. Uh, Toe Henry's yeah. constant blogging about um, anything that comes into mind leaves me wondering what's the point. I think that communicating messages, and I think that the best, really, in that sense, is the, some of the Obama tweets. You're right. Um, you but know, I guess rather than simply saying, oh, I got up this morning, fine day. Well, who cares? But uh, <laughs> I guess